Uh, nice to meet you all. Thanks for the invitation to present some of our uh, ongoing research and innovation projects within sustainable printed electronics and uh, paper batteries. So my name is uh, Gustav Nyström. With me I have also Xavier Eby here, who has, done, uh, has been involved in some of this work more practically than I have. And I represent EMPA and also ETH Zurich. So, but the research activities are done at EMPA, and in case you're not familiar, we are a materials research institute in Switzerland, located in these three different locations, with the main activities in uh, Dübendorf, which is close to Zurich. And just to give you a couple of numbers here uh, and, uh, and what show you what we are doing. So we're about 1,100 employees. And we're coming together to work on materials and technologies for a sustainable future. And it's a, we, what we're doing is fundamental research, but also applied research and technology transfer activities. So all in all, we're 30 different labs. And you see that we are uh, doing about 200 new R&D contracts with industrial partners every year. And then, of course, we're active academically and also in IP generation. Uh, so these are uh, typical numbers uh, from our output every year. Then our lab, we are about 40 employees working in sustainable biomaterials. So we're working a lot on different wood materials, wood coatings, biomodification of wood, new application of wood. But we're also working on the biopolymer level. So we work a lot with cellulose, other biopolymers, and look at ways how to process them into new materials and devices. Uh, and there is also where we come into forming inks, printing technologies, being able to print in 2D, do intricate 3D structures, and also some of these technologies in the paper battery field as well. So just have a couple of slides to, to sort of set the stage for why we're interested in specifically sustainable electronics and uh, paper batteries. So uh, we all know that we have a uh, an growing environmental issue with uh, waste and garbage such as this Great Pacific garbage patch here. But we also have a growing concern with electronic waste. That is actually the fastest growing waste stream that we have today. So that's a motivation for us to look for alternative technologies to replace simple electronic devices, which are often uh, complicated composite com combining metals with plastics in ways which are difficult to separate. And sometimes there is also not the economic an incentive to do the separation in order to facilitate recycling. So what we're doing in this, in this work is to look for alternative material concepts where, where we can design from the beginning to have uh, biodegradable material systems or recyclable material systems. And there are many different application areas where this could be interesting. One of them are uh, related to the monitoring of perishable goods, so basically being able to track different goods along the logistic chain. And this can be, for instance, pharmaceuticals, we can think about flowers, food quality monitoring. And if we look at the pharmaceutical space, there are uh, quite big numbers in losses related to uh, temper uh, lacking temperature control. Uh, and so if we think about um, our, one of our concerns that we've had the last few years with transporting of vaccines, it's very important to be able to monitor exactly the temperature history and to make sure that uh, medicals and uh, and vaccines have not passed certain critical temperature or humidity thresholds. And so that's one of the application areas where we're looking at. And we're looking at uh, finding ways to replace such uh, different systems uh, with more cost-effective and uh, green solutions. Uh, so to, just to summarize this, we are really trying to develop a new material and processing platform that is based on non-toxic materials that are either biodegradable or easy to recycle. And, and we are using a printing process to minimize waste, and we are interested in valorizing renewable resources for these activities. Here you see some of the demonstrators that we have developed. I will talk a, a little bit about uh, basically all of them. 
but we're also very fortunate to be invited here and to show materials uh, in this exhibition. So I will just focus on the different materials that we have and I will talk a little bit about each of them here and if you're interested, happy to discuss with you uh, afterwards. So starting off here is really the development of new ink systems. And if you want to do electronic, many times you want to have an uh, electronically conductive system. And th this we can form in many ways. We're working here a lot with different type of uh, inexpensive carbon materials, but also uh, bioresorbable metals uh, are interesting starting materials. And what we do is basically disperse these particles in a matrix of a biopolymer. And depending on how you do that, the amount of particle that you put in, the geometry of those particles, the relative ratio of them. You form uh, inks which have different viscosities. They flow differently, they can be suitable for printing flat objects. If you do this in the right way, sorry now this disappeared, doesn't matter, then we can go also in the three-dimensional space. So we can build uh, more complex geometries uh, layer by layer. And so just to show you how this is done, we're many times using an extrusion-based process where our gel-based inks are basically pressed through nozzles and we can form uh, intricate objects and shapes. And depending on how we structure them, we can also tune physical and mechanical properties of those objects. One specific example is a uh, shoe sole with integrated sensing that we are showing here. And here, uh, in a project here, which was led by one of our scientists, uh, Gilberto Sequeira, and it's a collaborative effort with two of the universities uh, in Switzerland, an electronics institute and also industry partners. We're looking at ways to print in one process this whole shoe sole with sensors which are which, with which we are able to monitor pressure maps and also the uh, shear forces that are applied when you walk. So this is for uh, gait monitoring, uh, for sports medicine, or maybe for regenerative medicine. So this goes into a shoe, and then we are able to monitor how this either patient or athlete is uh, moving, and, uh, and we can get important feedback on this uh, through these sensors. Uh, we'll talk about also our work on batteries. So uh, we have actually two technologies which we are showing here. One is a biodegradable supercapacitor. And just to maybe give you a bit of an overview of the different systems that we have when we talk about electrochemical energy storage. Supercapacitor is a system which is able to give you your charge in a fast way, but not store so much charge. The battery is typically speaking a higher energy density system, but with a lower power density, meaning it can deliver the power in a more slow and stable fashion. So we have two different technologies. We'll focus first on this and uh, show you a video here where you will see how this is done. So I essentially we have developed, in this case, four different ink systems, and they are loaded now on the 3D printer here to first print the underlaying uh, substrate and then we print sequentially on top of that current collector electrode and then also the electrolyte that is needed for this to be first folded and then operated. And here you see printer working to first uh, put down the substrate which is a cellulose, biodegradable cellulose composite and then on top of this, we print a layer which is there to take out the current from the device. And this is a carbon biopolymer uh, composite. And then on top of this comes another carbon layer for, in this case, uh, acting as a surface onto which we store the, the charge in this device. And in the end, it looks something like this. And just to prove the concept of biodegradability, we put this in a, a simulated uh, soil environment where it's disintegrating over about two months and we're just left with those carbon particles which are there for the electrodes and which you potentially could reuse for other applications later on. Since we're able to 3D print, we can also do more uh, complex geometry and print on, on non-flat surfaces. And we can make integrated uh, devices to put more of these together uh, to uh, uh, optimize performance and to give 
uh, tunable output voltage of the device. So here we just show an example where we can charge this system very fast uh, on the order of seconds, and then we are uh, able to operate in this case. It's just a, a, as a showcase, an alarm clock. We would think about sensor for maybe environmental sensing in a real use case application, but just to show uh, this thing uh, being operated. Another technology is the one where we have more of a conventional battery. This is uh, a paper-based uh, device. Uh, which we uh, were fortunate to have on the Time Magazine uh, 200 Best Invention list of the year, so very happy to get that recognition. We think it's a very simple and robust technology. We'll show you a little bit more detail how it works. So we have, in this case, a, a normal paper substrate, which acts as the membrane here. And then we have two different materials, so basically a carbon material for one of the electrodes and a zinc material in one of the other electrodes. And then as, as, we, as we print this, we are in a loaded configuration, so the device is fully charged. And it's also stable, so you can have it on the shelf until you activate it, and that's why we left, in this case, this part free here. So when we come with the moisture, water, or some other liquid, we can activate the cell. And when the cell is activated on one uh, of the electrodes, we will oxidize the zinc. And the, on the other, uh, we will have a re uh, reaction with air to reduce air on this air uh, cathode side. And you see that those, uh, combining those two voltages, we have the possibility to have a theoretical voltage of around 1.6. The reason why we chose this is because zinc is one of these bioresorbable metals which will oxidize and disintegrate into ions that are in essentially non-toxic to the environment. But it has also a, a, a material which has a very high theoretical charge capacity. So it's actually very interesting as an energy storage material. And then we wanted to use printing as a way to make this in a fast and efficient and scalable way. But also, we didn't want to put the electrolyte there because we want to have, as I mentioned already, stability and shelf life and be able to activate these devices on demand. Uh, what we can do is also to combine. So this is a, another layout than the one we have here, but I, the principle is the same. So you can couple many of those cells together and that allows you also to, to increase, if you want, the operational voltage of the device. And uh, just to uh, mention again, so the membrane is really nothing else than commercial paper in this case. We have two different than ink systems for the uh, two different electrodes, and in this case it's also a water-based electrolyte. And we think that it's interesting also to use printing in this concept because we can tune then how much zinc we want to put in the device. Many times these uh, kind of batteries are operating with foils, zinc foil and then you are not so well uh, to control how much of this metallic zinc that you use. So we think that might be also a sustainability advantage to, to use the printing approach and to be able to tune how much basically charge capacity you want to have on your material. And then just to show you uh, how, how this works, so in this case we have several of these cells put together. You see that no voltage over the device when it's dry. But as we put the water, we are uh, then activating these uh, batteries. And at some point, we should see this clock again uh, being turned on. Again, this is just something we happen to have around in the lab. And just to give like a hands-on demonstration that is actually working to power something uh, uh, that we can then uh, use the batteries for. And then I want to show you a couple of Slide, two more slides, basically, and this is materials that we don't have here, but that we have recently shown and that published, and that uh, I'm also excited to, to share with you. So here we're developing a completely different material. This is a multifunctional ink, and you see some colors here. Those colors are not coming from pigments, they're coming from the structure that the material has itself. So just as in some uh, beetles, butterflies, and plants in nature, 
they, they show vibrant colors because of the way their nanostructure are conformed. The same principle applies here, and if we do this in a, in, in a well-controlled way, we can develop materials which, which have these natural colors based on their structure. So in this case, it's a cellulose-based ink with a little bit of carbon added to it. This helps us to change and tune the contrast of the colors, but it also gives us an electrical feedback to the system. So that means that we have many ways, if we want to make a sensor or de uh, a device out of this, we have many ways to activate and control uh, the functionality. But we think it's an interesting way to form a, a structural color, an environmentally friendly material that can be used to print. And here are just two uh, demonstrators that we've uh, shown recently, and this is one where we are incorporating this ink system in a stretchable polymer matrix. As, as you see, when we stretch, we can change the color of this. So this is uh, acting as a colorimetric strain sensor, if you want. But it also has this electronic conductivity, which allows you to actually also have a resistive feedback, if you want. And on the other side of the screen, you see a simple demonstration of a biodegradable uh, color display, where we're using this ink and the fact that we can change color also based on the heat that we are uh, bringing to those different uh, pixels in that case. So I'm uh, approaching the end. I, I hope uh, I managed to uh, convey a few different ways with which we can design new materials in the form of inks that can be further processed with printing towards biodegradable sensors. We one specific example was a shoe insole. We looked at two different ways uh, to form, uh, if you want, paper-based batteries that can also be uh, activated on demand if needed. We can think about, we think it's interesting for many different applications. We mentioned logistics monitoring in the beginning, food quality monitoring, environmental agricultural sensors, biomedical diagnostic kits, and so on. And of course, we want to acknowledge all the people in the lab. Uh, here you see, a uh, few of us at work and doing some important recreational activities. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them now or to discuss later with you uh, afterwards. Thank you.